the efficiency of a standard thermal power station is typically somewhere around 40%. And that might not seem very impressive to you, but the efficiency of the engine in a modern day car is typically around 25 to 30 percent in normal operating conditions. So actually 40 percent is pretty impressive for something that burns fossil fuel. But it's not nearly as good as the combined cycle power station, because this type of power station is capable of an absolutely insane efficiency of over 60 percent. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at how it does that. So a standard thermal power station relies on a steam turbine to generate electricity. So essentially what it does is we have some sort of heat source, you know, we're burning something or maybe we have a nuclear reactor that generates the heat. Using that heat, we then boil water to create steam. The steam is forced through a turbine and the turbine spins up and that drives an electrical generator which generates power for us. Now the maximum efficiency that we can achieve with that kind of cycle is around 40% and it has to do with the temperature of the steam. So if we wanted to get even better efficiency out of this, the steam would have to be even hotter. But the problem is that if we make the steam hotter, we start destroying the equipment. So due to the materials that we use, we can't really get any higher temperatures out of this and therefore the efficiency is limited to around 40%. Another way of generating power is using a device called a gas turbine. So a gas turbine is essentially a very big jet engine. It works exactly the same way as a jet engine. But the difference between a gas turbine and a jet engine is that with the jet engine we try to create maximum thrust. So we try to uh, make the exhaust gases come out at a very high speed so that we can create the thrust required to propel a plane into the sky. Whereas with the gas turbine we're not interested in thrust, we're just interested in getting that shaft to spin as much as possible and we connect that spinning shaft to a generator. So essentially a gas turbine is a jet engine that instead of being optimized for thrust is optimized for maximum rotational power applied to its shaft. And then we use that to generate power. Now, of course, as the name implies, the gas turbine can only run on gas. So we can only use this way of generating power if we have a supply of natural gas or if we first gas coal. So what we can do is we can put coal into a coal gas plant and create gas from the coal, which is at the same time also coking, but that's for another video. Uh, and then we can use that gas. But the idea is we need some sort of gas to run the gas turbine. You can't put coal into it, right? Now, unfortunately, running a gas turbine standalone is not going to have great efficiency either. Uh, the efficiency of a gas turbine is also around 40%, so it's not really an improvement over the uh, over the steam cycle that the standard thermal power station uses. However, there is something very interesting about the gas turbine, which is that it operates at very high temperatures. So the firing temperature inside the gas turbine is around you know, more than a thousand degrees Celsius. And the exit temperature, the exhaust temperature of the gas turbine is around 500 degrees Celsius. And what that means is that the exhaust gases from that turbine are actually so hot that they can still be used to power the steam cycle that we would normally use in a, in a thermal power station. So what we can do is we can take a gas turbine, generate power with the gas turbine, and then we take the exhaust gases from the gas turbine, which are very hot, and use the heat from that exhaust to then drive a steam cycle uh, which again generates more power and that's going to give us better efficiency so let's just do the maths real quick right of course we start with 100 percent of the energy right so that's the fuel that we're putting into the system into the gas turbine in the beginning then we have our gas turbine now the gas turbine has again an efficiency of around 40 percent so 40 percent of that energy is taken and used to create electricity inside the generator. So now we have 60% of the energy remaining. Now that energy is inside those exhaust gases. So that 60% then goes into the second part of the system, which is the steam generator, 
which also has a 40% efficiency. So we take 40% of that remaining 60%, which means that our overall efficiency, if you do the maths, comes down to around 64%. Now, exactly 64% in this case, <laughs> if we assume they're both 40% efficient. Now, in reality, that's not going to be the case. Uh, the most efficient combined cycle power stations are around 60% efficient, and typically their efficiency lies somewhere in between 55 and 60%. But that's still a lot better than the 40% that you typically find on a conventional power station. Also, at this point, you might be thinking, well, okay, it's, it's efficient and all of that, but it's still a fossil fuel burning technology. You know, it uses fossil fuels, which is not good. It produces carbon dioxide, which is not good. So isn't this just a bad thing after all? Well, yes and no. First of all, yes, because, of course, those arguments are valid. But then also, no, because you could also argue, well, if you're going to burn fossil fuel anyway, which still happens quite a bit these days, you might as well do it as efficiently as possible, because not only will that save a lot of fuel, it also means you produce a lot less CO2 in order to create a given amount of electricity. So I think this is actually a very cool a very impressive and quite useful technology that we should definitely keep using for a while. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, of course, thank you for watching. Now we just wait for the motorcycles to go by. Their efficiency is typically about 15%, I believe.